Okay, do you want me to give All it right a try? Then. So you, you actually hear... Yeah, sure. You're not a... Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. Right, so, so uh, explain... Atlas, what so exactly ask yourself, my calm, position is... Calm down, calm down, okay. So, you have some kind of objection to name the trait, correct? I have four. Okay. Depending on your interpretation of... Okay, now, which premise are you questioning? The conditional of premise one. So you're questioning premise one. I'm rejecting premise one because either you violate Leibniz laws or you render the uh, conditional false. Okay, so what's the argument uh, that premise one is false? Well, well, there's four different depending on your interpretation. So I posted oh, this several go, times. So the first interpretation is if I am to name a trait like history. Everything is equalized except for the identities well, and history. Wait, histories. one second. What, what we're looking for is just some kind of argument like premises and conclusions. So if you want to try multiple arguments, you can do that. Or you can just, I think what would probably be best is just deliver the arguments one by one, just as premises and conclusion, and we can look at them. All right. What do you think is expressed by a syllogism that isn't expressed by natural language? Okay, so that seems like not really interacting with what I just said. Do you have a problem? Well, I'm asking you a question. Atlas, don't talk over me. Okay, now what I suggested is that if you have four arguments, right, I would like you to just present them. So you can just go one by one and just show me what the arguments are. All right, so shall I begin? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, what would be best is if you could actually write it. Do you want to just put it in general? I have. I've already, I've already written it. Here, look into bakery for one. I'll post it again. Okay, can someone just copy it over to general? Is this it? This thing about Cogdis? Uh, uh, from one. So I'll post it in general if you wish. Okay, this looks like a fucking... What is this shit? Okay. <laughs> And what is the form of this argument? Natural language. Right, okay. Like, so, do you object to the use so of natural language? What, Seriously? With, with this kind of stuff, I tend to, right? Because the people who run this line of argument are notorious sophists who capitalize on the ambiguity of natural language to conceal the fact that they don't have a coherent argument. So I'd ask you, can you actually present this um, such that we'd be able, it doesn't have to be completely valid, we can work with it, but I mean, condense it down so we're not just looking at natural language paragraphs. Premise one. Oh, Premise well, write, one. Write it, Name the yeah, just write it. I actually posted a, a uh, syllogism earlier. They That's fine, just take your time. There you go. Bottom of the crew. Can someone just copy it over so, to general? Okay, so premise one. Name the trait relies upon the trait equalization process. Premise two. The trait equalization process violates Leibniz's law or... Oh, wait, it went backwards. Or renders the conditional false. By the conditional, I assume you're referring to premise one of name the trait? Premise one, then state. Well, the whole premise one is a conditional statement. Well, sh sure, but I'm specifically referring to the second component, which makes it... Wait, you're referring to the second component as a conditional? No, I'm saying that what makes what's, it a conditional what's, what's is... The second one second, what's the second... The if, what's, then wait, state. Wait, wait a second, what's the second component of a conditional call? The first component is the if statement. The second component, yeah, what are, what component are, what is are the, the then statement. What are the words? Do you object? What are the, I'm just wondering, I'm just testing if you have like the just basic knowledge here. What are those two components called? All right, so stop poisoning the Yeah, um, so it's, it's fine. It's fine. Components you can just. Are the if, then statement. Right. You, you, are you going to let me speak? You can just say. Or you can talk? Yeah, you can just say that you don't know that they're called antecedent and consequent. So what your premise two here is saying is the trait sure. equalization well, I, process either violates the identity of indiscernibles or renders the, uh, what, the consequent false? So, either 
name the trait for the trait equalization process violates wait, the identity of the Wait, I'm trying, I'm trying, just one second. Or, we're trying to go, we're trying to go step by step so I can get clarity. So I understand your first premise, right? And also this argument isn't valid, so we're going to need to work it to make it valid, but we'll deal with that after. So name what? the trait relates. Oh, brilliant. So wait, can I, wait, so, stop, so, 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 right, stop, I can ask stop, you. stop, stop. Don't make me, well, you're, don't, you're don't, don't, don't make me, don't make me start using priority, right? No, I'm giving you my time right now. So just slow down. Okay, so oh, I yes, understand, uh, well, hey, Atlas, look, let me be clear. If you're going to be rude with me, I'm not going to waste my time on you. If you want to be polite, I'm you happy. You called me a softie. Atlas, if you want to be polite, I will sit here and have a conversation with you. If that's not to your liking, just keep being rude and you'll get booted. It's a good way to cop out if you start losing also, right? So Can let's I, just look at the argument step by step. Just listen. I want okay? well, so to ask. With your first premise. I understand what your first premise is saying. It's straightforward. Name the trait relies upon the trait equalization process. I take that to mean that um, if we accept the argument as sound, we're accepting the trait equalization process as a coherent idea, right? So that, that's what I take it to mean to say it relies on the trait equalization process, that if you are accepting the argument, you're going to be accepting the notion that the trait equalization process is coherent. Okay, so the premise two is a bit confusing to me. I understand this first part, right? I understand the first half of the disjunct where you say the trait equalization process violates the identity of indiscernibles, right? But then the second part confuses me or renders the conditional false. It sounds like you're talking about the, the consequent. Now, Contradiction. If you're, if you're, wait, stop. So if you're talking about the whole of premise one, which is what I had originally asked, because the conditional, the whole of premise one is a conditional statement. The premise one's form is P implies Q. That's yeah, P. and premise one Atlas, is false. That's Atlas, P. stop over talking me, okay? Look, listen, I am not the most patient person in the world. If you keep over talking me when I'm sitting here trying to be clear with you, I'm going to lose my temper very quickly, okay? If you want to have a conversation, then just be calm, please, okay? Now, the second part of your second premise, right? It's a disjunction. It says this or that, okay? It says, or renders the conditional false. Now, the whole first premise of name the trait is a conditional statement, right? It's in the form P implies Q. Now, I want to know if you're saying that it renders the whole statement false, or if you're just saying that the consequent is false. The whole premise one is Okay. You can reject All right. premise one on that basis. Okay. So um, can I right. speak now? Right. Well, well, I'm trying to make my way through your argument. Okay. So just one second. Okay. So well, I don't know when I can. Speak. What, right. Well, Atlas, just calm down. It's like it's like you're in some deranged like fucking point scoring contest. Like, do you want to sit here and just go through this argument systematically? I make sure I understand what you're saying. You make sure you understand what I'm saying. We try to figure it all out because that's what I'm trying to do, and you're making it difficult with your attitude. Okay? I'm not, I don't I'm have the patience for it. when I can speak. Right. Well, it would get to that point a lot quicker if you let me make my way through the argument. Okay. So I understand what the first premise is saying. I now understand what the second premise is saying, which is the trait equalization process, given that that's true, uh, it either violates uh, the identity of indiscernibles or the first premise becomes false. And then uh, the conclusion is that name the trait is incoherent. Now, one problem here is just about the kind of inference that's being made. So this argument is not valid. What I'd like to do now is just to make it into a valid argument, and then from there we could deal with it. So can I ask a question? Is it something about how to render the argument valid? I'm asking that the whole reason you asked me to create a syllogism was because you wanted to see if I had any points instead of just the ambiguity of language. So now that you know what that's, my that's position not, is and where I'm right. critiquing you from, that's exactly what you said. Well, well no, no recording what, right. you, yeah, you want you want to see a syllogism so you can see what's being said, but that includes understanding the structure of the inference that's being made. And when the argument isn't valid, it's hard to see exactly what the inference is. So it's not just like, right. oh, I want so, to see if there are propositions in your uh, argument that are coherent. It's I want to see the whole structure of the argument. So what I'd like to do now is just try to modify this until it's valid. And then once it's valid, we can deal with it. That would be a great so approach. Can I ask another question? Yeah, but it sounds like you're just trying to avoid going down this pathway. Like, do you have some kind of problem with this argument being formalized? 
I'm asking questions. Like, right. Well, I'm trying to what, actually what is, what deal is the point with here, so that the uh, what's the point of formalizing the argument so that it's completely yeah, well, ask yourself, so that it's ask... completely clear what the argument is saying. Right. Right. So you understand premise two now. What I'm trying to. I don't understand the overall structure of the inference that's being made. Right. So the most important part is, all right? Right, but and Atlas, it's... wait, stop for a second. What you're trying to do is you're trying to avoid the step in the conversation where we make the argument valid. Like, if you're going to say- Why I is it have... relevant? It's relevant to me because it will give me a clear picture of what the argument is. I care right. about this. That's why it's relevant. All right. So what extra information is going to be communicated if I clear up the, the language- The structure of make it the so inference. It's... The structure of the inference. Okay. And if I could explain it in two sentences in no, natural language. Atlas, which... Atlas, I want to understand the structure of the inference. So let's just make this simple, okay? If you want to continue talking to me, the next step is to make this valid. Do you want to engage in that step or not? Sure, let's go through okay. it. So, so I'm just curious. See. Before we, be, I want one question though. All right, if we're going to go through this process, I want to know what extra information you think is going to come from this. I've answered that already. I don't see a need to do it again. So, all right. Well, just assume I'm fucking stupid and answer because it wasn't clear the first time. Could you present does any, it? Does anyone in the chat want to say what I said repeatedly? Well, sorry, I'm just not understanding. Could you present it in a... To make the structure of the inference clear. Right, but I'm not understanding. Can you put it in a syllogism? To make this... You don't understand what I mean by to make the structure of the inference clear? Well, I'm looking for a general... I'm, I'm looking for a general understanding of the structure. Could you put that in a syllogism, please? Right, but you're just trolling now. It's incredibly obvious that you're Agnes, trolling, just... right? I'm not interested well, in being trolled. Uh... Now, you're starting to try my patience, okay? So please, let's not do that so we can actually have a conversation. Well, do, you, do you see how silly that is, right? No, I do not think that it's silly right. at all. And Atlas, this is, well, this, is now, this is now me warning you that I won't be entertaining that derail, okay? I've told you that I care about it. That's all you need to know. Now, well, if I, I care about Atlas, I care Atlas, about okay, so now we are entering the five times warning territory. Now. If you question whether I'm serious about the five times warning territory, right, which is where the rule comes in that if you interrupt me five more times, I ban you from the server and don't talk to you anymore, right? If you question whether I'm serious about that, I encourage you to ask in the text because I don't put up with this shit, okay? Now, you're on warning number one, okay? So let's continue. Now, we want to make this into a valid argument. How would we go about doing that? What I'll do is I'll just look at it for a second and I'll think about how we could make it valid and then I'll run it past you and see if you accept it.
Okay, so I've got a formalization here. Now, I think that you'll probably agree with this, because this seems to be what you're saying. Uh, so premise one is, if name the trait violates, violates Leibniz law, then NTT is incoherent. If name the trait's first premise is false, then NTT is unsound. Either name the trait violates Leibniz law, or name the trait's P1 is false, therefore either name the trait is incoherent, or NTT is unsound. You can think about that for a minute if sure. you want. Do you, do you want to work off that? Can I speak now? Well, before do I want to work off it, I want to know if you fully and completely accept that argument right there. Because I don't want to sure. get to a point... Right, okay, so you do accept it. Right, because sometimes what people will do is they'll kind of tentatively say like, yeah, I mean, it seems to make sense. And then when some problem comes up, they say, oh, it's not really what I said. So you, you would agree this you agree with right here this argument sure so okay uh, are we now gonna have an actual discussion well yeah so well i'm gonna just kind of go through it and tell you where i have trouble with it so premise one if name the trait violates Leibniz law then name the trait is incoherent so obviously there are positions out there where um you don't care about Leibniz law but you know i personally think that the law makes sense so for me i think i'm just gonna grant that probably that sounds fine uh, premise two, if name the traits P1 is false, then entity is unsound. That's just straightforward. Any time that an argument has a false premise, it's unsound, so I certainly grant that. Then premise three, that's where I have the trouble. And of course, the conclusion I have trouble with because I'm having trouble with one of the premises. So what would be the argument for premise three? Now, you can take a moment to come up with an argument because I want proper premises right. and a conclusion again. So I've, I've already written several arguments that you've refused to read. So if you want the specific one for Leibniz law, At Atlas, then I can post... Atlas, why, why... Look, let's just level for a second. Why is it useful to talk to me like that? Right? It's not, oh, I have some huge problem reading your arguments. I just want to be systematic about it. I want to clearly understand what's being said, and we can go through all of them one by one sure. carefully. Right? So, so it's so not that I'm refusing... I'm, I'm asking, not that, do you want me wait, to, wait, 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 no, no, wait. I want you to just admit that that's wrong, okay? In the sake of good faith conversation, just admit that's not true. I'm willing to sit here and go through your arguments with you. I've never said that I refuse to look at your arguments, have I? What? I asked you if Atlas, you, know, you wanted me to post Atlas, the argument Atlas, in regards to Leibniz. The sake, for the sake of, of good faith conversation, please just acknowledge that I am sitting here right now saying I'll go through your arguments with you. There's no me saying I won't look at your arguments. Did, did you listen? I Atlas, look, I are, you, are you conceding that or not? Can you listen are you to what I actually said? Atlas, stop trying to monologue at me, okay? This is my server. This is me giving you my time. If I'm talking to you, it's on my terms, not your terms. Get that through your head, okay? Well, now, oh, Atlas, that's very clear. Atlas, okay, so, that's, that's okay. number two. That's number two, right? We're going up to five, okay? Right, so that's number you made three. It very clear, that's but... number three, Atlas. You're going to leave the right. Atlas. So I'm going to get through this quickly. Four. You're a that's number four. Office, I'm just going to mute you. One... Okay, so you've been server muted for a second. Now, Atlas, you're on number five, which is super, super shaky ground, right? This is like the next time that you say something over me. Right? Unless I totally detect that it was just like an you know, honest accident or something like this, I'm just going to ban you from the server. Right? Now, I'm sitting here telling you I will systematically go through your arguments with you one by one and even formalize them for you. I just sat here in silence for a few minutes formalizing your arguments so we can all agree exactly what it said. And if you told me something was wrong about it, I would sit there and I would carefully work it until we get to something you agree on. That's what good faith conversation is about, okay? Now, what I don't want to do is put up with the interrupting garbage stuff, and I know, I can tell just by the way you talk, that you're the kind of person who, even despite the fact that I've done all that and that I'm sitting here willing to talk to you about everything, you're going to say something, right? You're going to start talking over me, do something irritating, get banned from the server, and then tell all your little friends, right, which I'm recording this also, bud, tell all your little friends that I was unwilling to engage with you. So just for the record, so it's completely clear on every recording that we have, I will sit here and painstakingly go through 
every individual argument Atlas has against Name the Trade if he will simply be respectful, okay? So let that be clear, keep that in your mind, and please act wisely. Now, would you like to present the argument for premise three? It doesn't have to be formal, we can formalize it if it's not there, that's fine. So ask yourself, I just want to ask, did you actually listen to what I said? I asked you okay. if you want the argument for At how it violates life. Atlas, I want the argument for premise three, right? So what we've got here is we've taken your invalid argument, right? And we've made it into a valid argument. Now it's got a proper form, okay? This is, this is a deductively valid argument now. Now I've told you, I am pretty fucking convinced of P1, enough that I'm just gonna grant P1. I'm completely convinced of P2, so we don't even need to argue P2. P3 is where the trouble is, okay? And if you show me some serious trouble with P3, I'm not gonna back off onto P1 and be like, oh, but like technically there's some positions against Leibniz, I'm just noting it, okay? If you, if you really show me P3, we're gonna grant that. What I want is the argument for P3. I don't want you to ask me, did you hear me? Did you this? Did you that? Talk about something else. I just want the argument for P3. What we're doing here is we're formalizing your argument, okay? Because we disagree. Look, I, I need to take a moment here to just describe the whole way that I visualize a debate, okay? So this is how I think about a debate. There's a big set of propositions out there, okay? There's, um, in fact, an infinite set of propositions. I can make a proposition about uh, one hair on your head and just change numbers in the proposition and generate an infinite amount like that, okay? I can say something like um, Atlas has one hair on his head, Atlas has two hairs on his head, Atlas has three, all the way up to infinity. That's <clears throat> infinite propositions just about the hair on your head, okay? So there's infinite propositions. Now, some very small sliver of those propositions are propositions that we know of, okay? Right? Propositions that we're aware of, that we've thought about. Those propositions we have attitudes about, okay? And the attitude is something like, this is true, this is false, I'm pretty sure this is true, I'm completely unsure if this is true. <clears throat> now, what I think a debate is, is there's some position, there's some proposition, right? And to be clear, since I'm not sure if you know what a proposition, a proposition is just a statement capable of having truth value, like the sky is blue, that's a proposition. Uh, lamp is not a proposition, it's a noun. How are you doing today is not a proposition, it's a question. So a proposition is a statement capable of having truth value. Now, when we have a debate, What's happening is there is some proposition, okay, at least one proposition, that you and I have a different attitude about. And we think that the other guy is wrong for the attitude he has. In this case, it's the conclusion of this primary argument, okay? NTT is incoherent or NTT is unsound. I think that's false, right? Now, at, and I'll just for the sake of debate take the neutral position of I'm just uncertain if that's true. Now, you want to persuade me to the notion that that is true. So what we do is we employ logic, okay, which is the means of connecting propositions together, right? That's how we build inferences between propositions. And the idea is you give me some argument <clears throat> whose conclusion is the proposition that we have different attitudes towards. Ideally, the premises of the argument you provide are made up of propositions that we both have the same attitude towards, and that way I'm going to be committed to either changing my attitude about one of those premises or accepting the conclusion. Now, if the premises you give, if, if they still involve propositions that we have disagreeing attitudes about, then we need to ask further, right, for an argument that leads up to that premise, right, until we reach a level that you're arguing from propositions that we have the same attitude about. So that's what I'm trying to do here with you. It's a completely fair way to approach a conversation. Now, you've come with an invalid argument, which is fine, right? I have no problem with some argument being natural language or just being an invalid <clears throat> set of premises and a conclusion. We can just take that, we can make it into a formal argument as we've done here, and now I'm gonna look at it and tell you my attitudes about all the propositions. My attitude to the first one was, I'm pretty sure that's true. My attitude to the second one is, I'm very sure that's true. My attitude to the third one is I have no reason to think that's true. So now we're at the step where I want an argument whose conclusion is premise three of this argument. That's what I want from you. And it doesn't have to be formal, there's, we can make it formal. There's two components to that argument. Okay. Do you want me to argue for how it can violate Leibniz law first or how it renders P1 false? Um, well, it, you can do both maybe at once. You can give one or you can give the other. But what we're gonna do is like, 
try to build some kind of argument whose conclusion is premise three. So as long as it's something I can get to the conclusion being premise three from, that's fine. So present it however you want. Shall we begin with Leibniz laws? Sure. Right. <clears throat> so I'm going to post this again. Debate. Shall I read? Okay. Now I just I have the recorder running in general, so it's it's better if you can put it in general, so I don't have to be flipping back and forth. Sure. Forward. So I've put your first argument there also. Okay, now what you've just posted is a big natural language paragraph. So what I'd like is if you could condense that down to a set of premises where the conclusion is premise three of your main argument. Right, so are we just going to have an infinite regress of syllogisms? No, is this what stop, stop, no, 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 because we've, I already told you what the whole purpose is, right? So the idea is that at some level, the argument should bottom out at propositions that we have the same attitude towards. We've gone one step deep and we're not at that point, right? I'm unsure of premise three, so we're going one step deeper. Now, if you really think I'm so uncharitable that if you reach basic ass propositions at the bottom, and I'm just gonna sit there going like, well, why would I think the sky is blue? That's incredibly uncharitable. I already granted two of your premises, okay? So no, it's not gonna be an infinite regress. And <laughs> well, unless you can never, get your argument down to some level where we share the same attitude towards a premise. But look, Atlas, if it bottoms out somewhere sufficiently obvious, everyone's just going to say, well, look, Isaac's being a fucking idiot for saying he doesn't accept that premise. So I don't know what your problem is. So what's the argument uh, for P3? Uh, shall, shall, we, shall we read through it together and formalize it? Well, can you do... Uh, we can if you really want, but what I'd prefer is if you could do what you did with the first argument. I really appreciated that. If you could just put it into a set of premises and conclusion. And then we can formalize from there. Well, I think I think it would be more beneficial if we read through it uh, if we read through it together. So we're on equal. Okay, uh, we we can do that first, but I might still ask you afterwards to give me premises and a conclusion if it's not sufficiently clear. And sure. In well, case, I, I in, case hear... in case you think this is out of some you know horrible uncharitability of ask yourself, it's just because it's easier for me to do what I did with your first argument if it says something concise and clear than if it's like a big paragraph, right? So we can do a read through, but if it's not clear after, we're going to go back to I want it as premises and All conclusion. Right. Well, I assure you. So, shall we read the first sentence? To yeah, go ahead. All right. Premise. Uh, so, everything is equalized by destroying the history of one of the objects. As is framed in the argument, it is the given human that is edited to be the same as the given non human, thus denying the trait equalization ever occurred. This would mean that moral retainment as a concept can no longer work, as we have denied the object's existence that could have retained moral value, thus making my denial of moral value to the given non-human not a contradiction with anything I had previously. I don't really understand what's being said there. So what would be good at this so, point would be, yeah, if we could just get that as like sort of premises and a conclusion. You can well, take, I, you can I, take I, a minute I, to think, if you don't have it right now, just I, take I, a minute I will, to think do about it. it. Yeah. I will do it. I just want to ask you, what do you think you cut out. What do I think about what? What do you think I just... You cut out again. What do I think you just what? What just, do you the think The problem is you're releasing, you're releasing your push to talk too soon. Just hold it down until you're done talking. What do I think you just said? I really don't know. I mean, I could take yes. like random... I could take random guesses at what you're getting at. It seems like you think that somehow the argument ends up saying that like two objects are one object or something, but it's not clear to me what the inference is here that's being made. Or even really what the well as I outlined so. well as I outlined in the beginning that is one of the possible outcomes of name the trait there are four possible flawed outcomes all of which render it incoherent as an argument okay now Atlas I have to ask are you interested in actually approaching this conversation in a structured way or is the whole thing you want to do just go off on these sort of tangents because I'm trying to be structured here I've formalized your argument Okay? It's really clear now what it's saying. This is good. Now, what we want is just to build out the argument chain until we hit propositions that we can all agree on. Okay, And there's no gotcha, oh, you don't have an argument right this second. You can take a minute and you can think about it. Okay, So what I'd like is if you could formulate this, whatever this is, this three, as some kind of set of premises and conclusion where the conclusion is premise three of your initial argument. You can take right. a few minutes and do that. All right. 
So to begin with, so there's two different uh, arguments with P in B3, and that is that I, I, P1 well, sorry, is false. Sorry, can, I want it just written. Like, look, you did it. What you did before was great. Okay, when I just ask. Can you just give me just a written argument, premises, and conclusion? That's all I want here. Written argument, premises, and conclusion doesn't have to be formal, and the conclusion should be premise three of your initial right. argument. So it doesn't have to be formal. No, it doesn't. And we if can I write, it. okay. So you can un understand it if it's informal. Um, to a degree, but not sufficiently. So Atlas, what you're trying to do right now, it's very obvious. You're trying to derail this into some kind of discussion about <clears throat> understanding things in natural language versus understanding them in the form of arguments. I've been perfectly clear about why I want to ultimately turn this into a formal argument, okay? Now, I've told you that's just my condition for having this conversation, okay? You can disagree all you want. I could defend why I care about doing that too, and I gave you a brief defense, but that's not what I'm here to debate with you, so I'm not going to entertain that further. Now, do you want to give me a set of premises and conclusion where the conclusion is P3 of your initial so, argument? So, so do you refuse to have debates in natural language? Is right. that you're, you're just trying to dodge. Okay, so I've told you already that I asked you a I'm, question. Not, I'm not going to engage with you in a debate about whether debates should occur in natural language and when it's uh, reasonable to ask for syllogisms. Okay, I could engage you in that debate, right? And I already gave sure. you some, I'm just gonna, re Atlas, stop. I'm just repeating myself now. This is delaying the actual conversation, right? So I could engage in that debate with you, right? And go off on some random tangent. I'm sensitive to tangents though, or at least I try to be, and I don't want to do that, right? I've given you some account. If you're not satisfied, then so be it, okay? But that's my condition for the discussion. I don't want to have a discussion about the discussion. I just want a set of premises and a conclusion where the conclusion is premise three of your initial argument. You can take your time and think it up. Right. So I'm, I'm really curious. When do you want a formalized argument during a debate and when not? Okay. Answer so, this just out so, of my... So I'm, I'm just like, I'm wondering how you think it's not incredibly obvious to everyone that you're trying to get away from what I'm asking you to do. So let me just make this a simple yes or no question, like I had to do before, right? Atlas, do you intend to give me an argument, as in premises and a conclusion, it can be informal, that's fine, uh, where the conclusion is premise three, of your initial argument. Just answer that with a yes or a no. And if it's no, you can just talk to the others in here. That's fine. But this is the condition for speaking to me. So yes or no. Yes, with a caveat. Okay. Can I continue to speak <laughs> uh, or are you going to cut you, me off? Right. If the caveat is just more of the same garbage, I'm just not interested. Okay. What I want is just the argument. So why don't you just take a minute and think about right, the argument. Right. So so, so you say you're acting in good faith, then you keep poisoning the well by saying this is garbage, but I'm a sophist, etc. And then you tell me not to monologue, and then well, you go I'm on big becoming, ass. Well, I'm becoming, I'm becoming frustrated with Atlas. It's my server. If I want to monologue, I'll monologue all I feel. Well, you're, sure. you're here, you're here because I let you be here. You're talking to me because I'm friendly enough to take the time well, to do so. And every second that I spend talking about the nature of the conversation, what our roles are as parties in the conversation, when it's reasonable to ask for formal arguments, is a moment that I get slightly more frustrated because I just want the fucking argument. So stop pissing me off and just give me well, the argument where the conclusion is P3 of the well, initial so, argument, please. I'm sorry, you're, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry you're so short tempered. The reason I came on here was because you called my position AIDS. So. You came out of okay, this uh, Atlas, by insulting Atlas, me, and I'm here to keep, resolve. You keep talking about the conversation. That's called meta discussion. Okay, I'm not interested in meta discussion. What I want is just the argument. Now, I don't care. So what I'm going to say now is no. I don't care about your caveat. Forget about that. Let's just hear the argument for P3, please. And, right, you then. know, we're, so, we're happy to engage here over a period of time. If you don't have it right now, you can go and think about it, and you can come back tomorrow. I'm easy to find, despite the what rumors may say from various sophists on the internet. If you're polite and you're willing to talk, mm -hmm. you can take as many tries as you want, Atlas. Mm -hmm. So, you've already called me a sophist, and you've already said... You just well, you, you keep... Look, let's just... Let's just...
I, I'm just curious if I put it to a vote. Like, do you guys just... What do you want? Do you want to see him present an argument or not? I put the vote in general. It's one for yes and two for no. So, uh, ask yourself, have, have you not written, uh, have you not read, is, is that not an argument? Are you saying that's, you know, just nothing? It's just, uh, you know, the words that I have just written present, don't have grammatical just structure. Just present the argument, dude. Just present the fucking argument. I present. I'm just waiting for the, the argument. Just, just present the proper argument. Just present it. That's all we're waiting on, man. Right. That's all we're and we're, and we're, so not, we're, not, the... we're not even looking for a gotcha either. I understand. Uh, whoa, a hundred percent yes vote on they want you to see the. That's kind. Of, that doesn't even happen much. There's usually at least a few meme votes. Really? Now that's thir thirty-one nothing. That's virtually everyone in here. Okay. Now, um, uh, oh, see, now I've lost my train of thought. Whatever. Look, we just want the argument. Can you give the argument? That'd be great, please. Right. So, how about what? I presented so far wasn't an argument. You're just rejecting that you it doesn't know, have gram Atlas, uh, grammatical. Plan. Atlas, you know what I mean by argument. I'm talking about a set of premises and a conclusion. And as I've said, right. as I've said, we I'm are not. As I've said, we are not even looking for a gotcha, Atlas. If you don't have the argument right now, that's fine. Just come back tomorrow with the argument. Or, or alternatively, just take a minute or two and just. Think up roughly how to condense that into a set of premises right. and a conclusion. So I'm, the reason why I'm having this meta narrative is because I think it's very relevant. Okay, Atlas, I, think I do not have interest in the meta discussion. I look. If you want to present the argument, present the argument. That's what everyone here wants to see. You've said that you intend to do that. You said after a caveat. It's been like five minutes since you've said that. Okay, please just present the argument. That's all that I want to see. If you want, if you want to have right. that a discussion, there's plenty I of other people I presented the argument here. in natural language. Right. Okay, but you well, know, Atlas. The, well, Atlas, it's to me, but you're stop, just stop, stop, stop. You know what I mean when I say argument. I'm asking for a set of premises and a conclusion whose conclusion is premise three of your initial argument. Okay. I don't want a natural language paragraph that's on me to interpret. Do you understand my Atlas? Look. Do you understand my Atlas? Objective? Atlas. I'm gonna just mute you for a second. And we're just going to sit here for a minute and just let you come up with an argument, okay? So I'll put you back on in a minute. We're just going to sit in silence. And if you have an argument, then great. If you just start rambling more, we're just going to put you on mute again and let you try to generate an argument, okay? So just wait here for a minute. Okay, we're gonna unmute you, Atlas. Now, please just give us the argument, as in premises and a conclusion, you know that's what I mean by argument, for premise three of your initial argument. And please just Do put you it think in text. it is in good faith to mute? Okay, so we're just gonna mute you again, and we're going to unmute you when we see an argument in text. Now, I'll stay for another five minutes or so, so, when my clock hits 12.50, if there's not an argument by then, at that point, I'll bow out. But I'll unmute you and you can interact with the other people in the server. So we'll either unmute you then and you can talk to the others, or if you produce an argument before that time, uh, you're welcome to post it and then we'll unmute you. And uh, of course, you 
cannot make this out. Uh, I'm sure you'll try to, but you cannot make this out as, oh, I'm unwilling to hear your argument because I'm perfectly willing to hear it. You're in the server. As long as you're polite, you're welcome to stay here and you can come back tomorrow or the next day with the argument. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, we can have a group meditation like Vera says. So just inhale, close your eyes, you know, sit cross-legged on a cushion. Um, feel the sensations of your face and your breath. Um, feel your diaphragm expand and contract. Now, every time that you notice that your mind has started thinking thoughts, you want to redirect your mind to the breath. Okay? So, you just want to sit there, just focus, focus on your breathing. Now, try to follow the breath for the entire duration, for its entire course. Feel it as you inhale it, feel it as it sits for a moment at the point of rest where you're not breathing in or out, then feel as you exhale it. Every time you notice that the mind has... Oh, there we go, okay. So, we've got an argument, let's look at it. I'll unmute Atlas here, but I'm just going to read it, so please don't scream at me or something. Oh, please, okay. read out in full. It's That's formally it. logic. It's formally valid. Therefore, Why are you trying to get wait, yourself so, banned, So, the conclusion here, obviously, this is just some kind of meme argument. So, I did say I'll give him the duration of the few minutes, right? Obviously, for anyone who's not paying attention or reading through the argument, the conclusion is I'm incredibly stupid or I'm a dick face or something like this, right? So obviously this is a meme, this is not an actual argument. Um, we're just going to mute it's Atlas again, and we're going to give him, as I said, until 1250 to produce an actual argument whose conclusion is premise three of his initial argument. If he doesn't do it within that time span, then I'll unmute him after, and you guys can interact with him if you want to. If he does, then I'm happy to continue with him. And he can always come back with the argument at a later point, right? When he realizes he's made a complete fool of himself in this discussion, and just gotten, like, butt-wiped, basically. <laughs> he can come back later and redeem himself with another argument because the server is not going anywhere. So we'll just wait for Atlas to produce an argument. <laughs> don't don't leave. Don't be a fucking soft cock like that. What about those four arguments though? You left. Oh no. Oh my god, I was about to expose myself to that deeply, holy fuck. 
Okay, so we've hit 1250 and we still haven't seen an argument, so I'm just going to sum up and then I'll unmute him and ping him if he wants to come back and interact with any of you guys. He left, by the way. Did he leave the server or did he just leave the conversation? No, just a call. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just unmute him and ping him and he can come back and talk to you guys. So in closing, all I'd say is that initially he gave an argument um, that name the trait is either unsound or incoherent. It started as rambling paragraphs. Uh, we eventually got an informal argument, so a set of premises and a conclusion, but it's not, it's not set up to be deductively valid. Um, we then transformed that into a deductively valid argument, uh, which he agreed with. Um, I granted him the first two premises of his argument and questioned the third premise. At that point, I requested another uh, argument, a supporting argument, whose conclusion is the third premise of the initial argument, which is, of course, the point of uncertainty here. Uh, at that point, he simply refused to produce sets of premises and conclusion. He started posting paragraphs. He started engaging in meta discussion. Uh, he started just posting insults in the text channel. Uh, but, you know, for anyone who's recording, he's welcome to come back when he's calmed down and present his argument for uh, P3. So with that said, I'm going to leave, but I will now ping him if he wants to come back and talk to you guys. And by leave, I just mean I'm gonna be quiet. That was fun. That was disappointing on his part. P.S. Little bitch.